When I was a kid, I spent most of my time exploring outside. That's where I discovered the power of nature, plants, and science. My whole world changed and there was no looking back. Some people have diaries. I kept notebooks of all my adventures. Whatever I need to find, a faraway place, an old friend, or a window to the world beneath our feet. It's all in there. Just turn the page and whoa! My name is Maria, and these are my nature notebooks. Have you ever seen something flying around flowers? They always make a loud buzzing sound. And they always seem to be very busy. Of course, I'm talking about bees. There are bees you can see here at the Chicago Botanic Garden, but bees are everywhere. You may have heard about a bee, you may have seen a bee, but you may not know that without bees, the world would look a lot different for us. Bees help our plants, our fruits, and our vegetables grow. But more about that later. Let's go see if we can discover some more cool things about bees. Maybe even discover a few outside. Let's go check it out. How's it going? Hey, Paul, how are you today? We are exploring and learning all about bees. Can you tell my friends what you're up to today? Yeah, so we're looking for bees and we're at some trees here with lots and lots of flowers and flowers means bee food. So if there's gonna be bees anywhere, they're gonna be on some flowers. So we always see all these bees on all these flowers. What are they doing? Bees love flowers for two reasons, but I guess you could say one reason. They're here for food, and they're here for two types of food. Nectar, which is a sugary, sort of watery, it's like bee Gatorade, and also for pollen, which has sort of got a lot of protein and fats and is really nutritious for adult bees and baby bees. And so when they're showing up at a flower and foraging, they're, they're usually drinking some nectar and collecting some pollen to bring back home to their babies. Bee food. That's so cool. The plants make this sugary sweet substance to attract bees to visit them. And the reason they're doing that is because they wanna move some of their pollen, which is an important part of the plant's biology. The plant has to move some of its pollen to another flower. So when a bee shows up at a flower, it's helping the plant to eventually make more plants in the future by moving some pollen around from flower to flower. And the plant is helping the bee by providing some, some nectar and a little bit of pollen as well for food. All of my friends have been asking about this. Where do bees come from? Where do they go? Where do they live? And where do they sleep? Bees are coming from all over the place, but most bees are gonna be coming from the ground. So they build their own little nests underground. They're not really gonna be in a big colony like a, like a honeybee nest or a wasp nest. Most are just in little burrows underground but there are some that are gonna be live, living in dead, rotten stumps uh, in your backyard or in the forest. Others that are gonna be nesting in tufts of grass or a little mouse nest, things like that. Um, but they live all over the place. So we all know 
that bees sometimes sting. Why would a bee do that? Great question. Lots of people ask this question, and it's a good one because getting a bee sting can really hurt. But for the most part, most bees are, are not out to sting. They, they do it as a form of protection for themselves. And some bees, like honeybees, are a little bit more aggressive because they're living in this big giant colony. It's sort of like a big business with lots and lots of workers and a queen. But lots of other bees are just living on their own. So it's just a mama bee and she's making a home for some little baby bees. And she doesn't really wanna cause too much trouble. So she'd rather not bother you uh, unless you're basically gonna, gonna squish her. Um, so bees sting to protect themselves, but for the most part, they don't really wanna cause any trouble, and that includes honeybees as well. That's very good to know. For some species of bees, like bumblebees or honeybees, they live in these complex colonies. And so there's a queen bee, who's sort of the one in charge, uh, and then there's all these worker bees that help out that queen bee with all the daily tasks. So the queen bee is going to be laying eggs and sort of managing what everyone does in the colony. And the worker bees are going to take care of the babies. And they're also going to be going outside to collect pollen and nectar from flowers, some for themselves, but mostly to bring back to the colony for all the developing babies. So when we're looking for bees, there's a couple things we want to do. The first is we're going to use our eyes. And if we look out at all these flowers here, you know, just a bunch of white flowers, but we might see some tiny little, about the size of a bean, a shape sort of zipping around. And that's our first clue that there's some pollinators out foraging for food on the flowers. The other thing we want to do if we're not seeing any bees is stop and slow down and listen. The reason bees are buzzing is because they're, they're moving their flight muscles around. And so that's what gives them their sort of characteristic buzz. It's kind of like their little motors, like sort of hum of a motor in a car. A bee is buzzing because its wings are beating so fast. There's one right there. Do you see it? My name is Polly. I'm a worker bee. Hey, Polly. I fly around collecting nectar for my colony. That's fun. I spend my days buzzing through the trees. I like trees. Pollinating and pollinating flowers with expertise. Buzz, 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 buzz. we're all part of a team. Hooray! Buzz, 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 we help the world stay green. We work together every day, the workers, drones, and queens. My name is Norman. Hi, Norman. I'm different, I'm a drone. What's that? Unlike the worker bees, I head out on my own. I love to travel from high to high by go. Hi. Meeting the other queens to help our family grow. Buzz, 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 buzz. spreading pollen dust. Buzz, 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 nature counts on us. We work together every day, the workers, drones, and queens. Presenting your royal highness. The one, the only, the queen. I'm the queen. I'm mother to the hive. And the eggs I lay let us grow and thrive. Oh, yes. Back to work. A five, six, seven, eight. Buzz, buzz, buzz. buzz, buzz. We're always there for you. Hooray. Buzz, buzz, buzz. And now our song is through. We work together every day. The workers, drones, and queens. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Hey, Paul. What's that cool toolkit you've got right there? This here is my nectar toolkit. Check it out. It's got everything I need to figure out how much nectar's in a flower and how much food the flower's given to the bee. So what we got in here, we've got a Swiss Army knife to cut a flower off. We've got a little hand lens, a little baby magnifying glass, and then the most important thing 
is we have these little tiny glass straws. We call them microcapillary tubes, which are basically tiny little glass straws that can help suck up the nectar from a flower. So let's grab one and take a look. So when a bee's going to get some nectar from a flower, it's gonna stick its tongue deep down in the center here. So we're gonna do the same thing, just like a bee, with our little glass straw. And we'll see a little bit of water getting sucked up, a little bit of nectar getting sucked up in our glass straw here. So we blow out a little bit of that nectar, which is a tiny bit. And then we hold it up to the light. So what it tells us here is just how sugary our sample of nectar is. Not too much, but there's enough for a meal. If you're here at the garden with your parents and you wanna look for some bees, my recommendation would be to check out the evaluation garden right in front of the Science Center. There's all different types of flowers. There are a huge diversity of colors, shapes, and sizes, and that's gonna give you a lot of diversity of different types of bees and other pollinators. So definitely check that out. Thanks so much for telling us all about bees. I feel like we've learned a lot. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next time. Bees help flowers, vegetables, and fruits grow and make more plants. So without bees, a lot of food would start to run out. Bees help fruits and vegetables. And fruits and vegetables are not only food for us, but also food for our animal friends. Without bees, stuff like blueberries, apples, pumpkins, and even watermelons would start to be less and less. Some even disappearing from their natural environment. You may have heard someone say, busy as a bee. That's because bees are always busy. And when they work so hard, they are able to help to make more of the foods that the world really needs. In the morning, it was very chilly, and we stopped to look at some flowers. And curled inside one of the flowers, there was a bee that looked like it was kind of just taking a nap. There's some bees that do that, where they don't actually go home at night, and instead they find a spot like in a flower that might be closed up a little bit, and that's where they spend the night, and they try to stay warm in there. Bees are really exciting to me because they used to be something I was really afraid of. But as I've gotten older and I've learned how much we depend on bees for our food and for the flowers that make spring so beautiful, and after learning that they are such gentle and beautiful creatures and there's so many different kinds of bees, they're really beautiful. Bees are really just looking for food. Uh, so as long as you give them space, as long as you're not trying to catch them or bother them, they should be really gentle and calm. Did you know that you can help bees by growing a garden at your home? This is especially important in areas like the big city, where it's harder for bees to find food. Bees use gardens like pit stops. They use them as places to rest and eat before moving on their way. So when you see a bee buzzing around your flowers, it's kind of like they're saying, hey, oh, I'm tired. You mind if I rest and get a bite to eat before I move along my way? And by helping them and growing native plants in your garden, you are helping to keep the bees alive. Bees of the world come in all sorts of different colors and shapes and sizes, and they live their lives in all sorts of different ways. Bees live all around the world, on top of mountains, in deserts, in the jungle. Some bees are in the ground, and others can fly high in the sky. 
If the air temperature is just right, some could fly as high as Mount Everest. What do you think it's like to be a bee? Let's close our eyes and imagine what it's like to weave around through flowers as big as your house. What do you think a bee sees as it flies through the air? was fun. Today was so great and our next adventure is going to be even better. Remember, you too can make your own nature notebooks just like these and I can't wait to see them. Until next time, see you later friends.